Welcome everyone to the Healthy School Food Summit brought to you by the Coalition for Healthy School Food and Plant Pure. I'm your host, Ron Gandiza. And in this session, we are honored to have with us author and vegan athlete, Ellen Jaffe Jones. Ellen is a prolific author, nationally ranked sprinter and personal trainer. She was known as Earth Mother in a Suit in her career as a financial consultant at Smith Barney and spent 18 years in major market TV news as an investigative reporter. She was also a stay-at-home mom for six years with three daughters. Her first book, Eat Vegan on $4 a Day, became a bestseller and went on to write several other popular books, including Paleo Vegan, Kitchen Divided, and Vegan Fitness for Mortals. Welcome, Ellen. Thank you, Ron, for having me and all the kind words. Appreciate it. Well, you know I'm a big fan of you, especially that Eat Vegan on $4 a Day was one of the books, first books for me that I read and said, you know what? I can actually do this. This is not something that is too overwhelming or too expensive when people think of a, a lifestyle that's healthy you may think that you're going to spend so much more for organic food or you're going to be priced out to where you're you're going to be broke just trying to get healthy and, and that's not the case not at all not at all i know you uh, have uh, done a number of of running events and I, not necessarily marathons but i understand you do uh Days and, and others. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yeah, and I think really uh, the best way to tell you about that, if you don't mind, I'm going to unplug here and we're going to take a little walk into the wall of shame, as I like to call it. But it really does says uh, it really does say more about what I do than anything I could say. So we're just going to take a little trip, and as I tell you, um, I'll tell you about it. But I have placed in a hundred and. 17 5k or longer races for my age group since 2006 and my significant other just made it his project to put all of these up on the wall i hope you can see all of those behind me um so that's that, crazy yeah we just had um some work done in the home yesterday and the contractor came in and he said you know i've done a lot of homes and I've seen maybe two or three awards that people might get running. He says, I've never seen this much. This is crazy. And I said, you should try a vegan diet because plants can work for you too. How do you do it? Because you, it, it takes a lot of, obviously it takes a lot of uh, nutrition, right? Energy. You, you know, people say, oh, a vegan diet is complicated or it takes so much effort. It's like, I'll tell you what's complicated. My ex-husband had a heart attack. He was not vegan. I spent 30 days in cardiac rehab by his side and with all those tubes and everything into his body. And I took pictures of those. That was really complicated. The drugs afterwards, really complicated. A vegan diet, piece of carrot cake. And, you know, you feel so energized. Next week, I'm going to the National Senior Games. I'll be competing there for my second time. Uh, four years ago, the last time I competed, I got seventh in the U.S. in the 1,500 meters, 10th in the 400 meters. And I have done two full marathons as well as nine half marathons. And those are all up there too. But I'm much more of a sprinter. I think I'm genetically programmed if one can be to do that. But how do I do it? Just eating. It's so simple. You know, I just followed Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicines for food groups, and we can talk about that if you want what that is, but it's just so simple. Beans, grains, and greens. And people ask, how do you eat on $4 a day? Beans, grains, and greens. Shop in, um, uh, just buy in bulk and shop the perimeter of the store. I mean, it, it is really not rocket science. It is so easy. And when you feel so much better, uh, it, it just makes such a difference in your life, really. And my parents were so sick and diseased by the time I had kids, because I'm the youngest in my family out of three, they couldn't lift my kids, let alone babysit them. And I have three daughters, and I really want to live a different life than what I grew up with. We used to joke in hospitals like, oh, I wonder what wing our family's disease is paying for this week. Or um, we would joke it was the scene of our family reunion. But really, not very funny. You wrote, of course, $4 uh, eating uh, on a vegan on $4 a day, which was very, to me, groundbreaking because it, it broke that stereotype that, Oh, to be eating healthy, you have to spend uh, much. And in schools, as we, for the summit, as you know, we're focusing on uh, the challenges schools face. There's that same perception that eating healthy or teaching kids to eat healthy uh, and, and sh having more healthy or plant-based options within a school menu is too expensive. Tell me a little more about 
what you've learned and what you share within your research? Well, I speak all over the country at VegFest, book festivals, all different kinds of venues. And I actually had a guy come up to me at one event and he goes, I just want to tell you, I am the purchasing agent for our monastery and we do this on a dollar a day. And I just had to share that with you because, you know, they're all plant-based. So I think that's just one takeaway message. And I really believe that if schools got rid of the meat and the dairy, or at least cut back on it and replaced it with means with beans and grains, they would see significant drops, not only in, in the expense of food, but also if you track this at all as a school, the um, attendance, the health care, the, um, the improved health. And that's one of the things I focus on too. It's not only what you save by avoiding doctors and uh, disease. It is what you save at the store as well. And I actually, when I give talks, I crunch the numbers because of my financial background and every recipe in Eat Vegan on $4 a day has an estimated price based on ingredients you can find at any big box store. So you don't have to shop at a health food store. But the price of beans is about five or six cents an ounce. So that translates to a full four ounce cook serving of about a dime. And when you compare four ounces of hamburger meat or beef tenderloin, the more expensive cuts of, of beef, it's just, there's no comparison. So that's really what I want people to understand is that you can save so much money physically on the cost of the food, but also on the improved health. And certainly I am the only healthy person in my adult family. They all had heart disease and diabetes in addition to cancer. I mean, I sometimes joke, not so funny, that I come from the sickest family in America. And that really is what inspires me. And I hope that Schools will be looking, you know, the children don't necessarily show signs of disease just yet, although some do with obesity and, and diabetes, of course. But what happens later in life is huge. And to the extent schools can recognize that these are such important steps they can take early on, you know, I'm all for it. You probably meet up with a lot of parents, uh, I'm assuming, at, at a number of these events. What are the common questions you get from parents asking about whether it's about eating more inexpensively and to help their their kids or or general questions about health well well, of course the main question as every vegan gets is where do you get your protein will i get enough protein i always go does it look like i have a protein deficiency um protein deficiency is really rare in the u.s and i usually ask my audiences anybody here have a protein deficiency or do you know anybody who has a protein deficiency And nobody raises their hand. And then I go, do you know somebody who's been diagnosed with cancer, diabetes, and heart disease? And everybody raises their hands. And I go, that's really what we should be stressing about and worrying about. So protein is greatly overrated. Even the USDA says we get too much of it and we should cut back as Americans. You know, the high-protein diets may work in the short term, but it's often at the expense of our heart, as I found out, and our kidneys as well. It's way too much overload on the kidneys, and we don't drink enough water, so that combination is really toxic. So it's important to understand if you eat a plant-based diet, you're already getting lots of water-rich vegetables and fruits. It's important to still drink water, but it's just uh, kind of a no-brainer if you're looking for a one-stop shop. Plant-based is really the way to go. So that's that's uh, the, the big concern is you know are, are we getting are we getting proper nutrition and of course you can go online look at the great books by registered dietitians and doctors who really get into this issue. I've been so lucky because I have listened to all these fabulous plant-based doctors over the years and have taken what they said to heart and it really does work. Um, they are doing it because their heart is in it and because they see the results on a daily if not hourly basis when they talk to their patients about what is the most appropriate thing. And one of the things I say in, in Eat Vegan on $4 a day is when you understand there's no money in broccoli, then you understand why you have to be your own investigative reporter like I used to be and figure out the truth about food. So much of uh, the research that has, has been done is um, pharmaceutically paid for, funded, different corporate interests are funding some of these studies. So you really have to try and follow the money, as reporters like to say. I know kids, when they take these ideas from, from school, right, saying, oh my gosh, my teacher says I should be eating more fruits and vegetables and, and some beans. And the parents say, well, that's great, but we can't afford that. You know, what do you say to those parents if you could send something back with the, with the child back home? Well, the way to 
be able to really cut your costs is by cooking from scratch. And that means beans, uh, dry beans are way cheaper than anything else out there. Although canned beans in a pinch uh, certainly can do the trick, but they're about twice as much money. And then frozen beans may be three times as much money, depending what what you're really uh, trying to cook. But when people say, I don't have time to cook, I go, you don't have time for cancer, heart disease, or diabetes. Those are real time wasters. I've lived up close and personal with all three of those buddies and my family members, and it derails your life. You don't have time to do this stuff. And that's one of the reasons I kind of joke that I win my age group so much is because I show up. <laughs> it's not entirely true. but. It is about setting priorities. And cooking with children is so much fun. You know, from the ages of when my kids were little, we had the big high-powered blenders, and they would dump in a bag of frozen blueberries. I mean, it, it can be that simple. And the important thing is not to scream when they dump the whole bag of berries in there, and you only wanted to use like a fourth of the bag. So that could be expensive, but really, really not at all. I mean, my kids were never sick. And even though we weren't exclusively vegan during that time, although much of the time we were, um, they were just um, so healthy and still continue to be that way. So other takeaways, um, as far as expense goes, just remember that beans are ridiculously cheap compared to the cheapest form of hamburger meat. When I actually crunched the numbers, it was uh, hamburger meat was seven times more expensive than an equal four ounce serving of beans. Beef tenderloin, 37 times more expensive than an equal four ounce serving of beans. So those are the kinds of numbers to think about. And then when you talk about dollar cost averaging, that $100,000 bypass surgery, which is a very conservative estimate. In my ex-husband's experience, it was, the nurses told us, a million dollars for 30 days in cardiac rehab. So if you dollar cost average, borrowing a phrase from financial services, all the hamburgers you eat over the course of a lifetime in a restaurant, for example, it's not a $5 hamburger. It's a $100 hamburger. It's a $1,000 hamburger, depending how many hamburgers you eat. So I hope that people will think about that, that it is not only the cost of the food, it is the cost of disease and how it robs us of our children. Entire generations are losing each other and don't even know it. What is the most popular dish for the cost? Like, oh my gosh, it's so popular with kids. Let's just think kids because we're, you know, we're, we're here for the summit and... I want to know what would be the highest value, you know, for the return, meaning the return being the satisfaction of, of the children. I think in terms of cost, if we just look at that alone, chili. So you serve it over some whole grain. And, you know, when I taught cooking classes back in the days when I had time to do that on a very regular weekly basis, you know, if we had like 10 more people show up, I would just like throw in another cup of rice. And so that will just spread the, the dollars. Um, so with and with beans and chili, you know, you can come up with any concoction you want. And if you want kids participating in the cooking process, which I always encourage, you know, they can add their own spices and you know, nobody throws out their spices. That's another thing I found in, in uh, averaging costs that, uh, you know, technically you're supposed to have new spices every year, but most people, if you ask them six, nine years is about the average as long as there are things crawling around in it. So you can really go to town on some of the spices. And of course, having your own garden, whether it's at home or at school, many schools are having uh, all kinds of gardens that the kids participate in either on the property or off site. So when they're able to start something from seed and then see it grow and then pick it, that's just a great, a great thing. So um, other things that work in terms of um, things like chocolate mousse. I have a great chocolate mousse recipe and eat vegan um, and also smoothies. I mean, they're so sweet and full of fruit and allowing the kids to participate in the cooking process is also a fun thing for them. And you can make a smoothie depending what you put in it last, you know, it, you can do a lot of servings with it. So, um, of course, we have, as a, one of the things, many things I've done, I was a La Leche League leader, breastfeeding information and support group, and humans have the, uh, our human breast milk has more sugar in it than any other mammalian milk. So what that means is that after a child is weaned, in theory, you don't lose that sweet tooth. So the question then becomes, how do we satisfy the sweet tooth? And 
That's why nature in her perfect wisdom invented something called fruits. So with kids, you know, eating lots of fruits in their natural states, eventually they will develop a love for the sweetness. I know my own kids, I took them to an organic uh, stand once and my daughter popped in a sugar snap pea for the first time at the age of three. And she's going, mom, is this candy? And that is the kind of way you can get your taste buds changed. It doesn't take very long to change your taste buds, and that goes for kids, too. Of course, veggie burgers, if you're having that hankering for a burger, there are so many dish, uh, delicious kinds of veggie burgers out there that you can make from scratch, make from scratch for not much money, um, and then the different companies that make them, too, are absolutely awesome. Your book, uh, Eat Vegan on, on $4 a Day, is not the only book you've written. But it is your first one, and it, it really is one. I see your shirt there. Uh, so if people want to find out more about it, where should they go? My website is vegcoach.com, and all of my books are there, as well as on Amazon and any place where books are sold. I know you have a new book coming out, so we look forward to interviewing you more on that. But I, I really appreciate you taking the time for the kids here and, and to explain that you can eat healthy and it doesn't have to cost a lot and it can create some very lifelong habits for kids. One other thing I did want to say, because we, I think, um, really need to touch on this anyway, that parents can get involved with the kids at school. I serve veggie burgers to my kids and I was also the high school cross country uh, and track assistant coach and I would run with the kids and they would go like, wait, you're, you're faster than I am and you're the age of my grandmother. And so I, as a result of that, got asked to prepare food at the end of their summer camp for two weeks and kids had never tasted things like crunchy peanut butter and you know all the kinds of things that I brought to the literal table. So there are lots of ways you can get involved. I encourage you to do that. And thank you so much for having me, Ron. Thank you for everything you do. VegCoach.com, right? Right. Thank you so much, Ron. Yeah. And uh, for the audience here, if you want to learn more about the Coalition for Healthy School Food, just visit healthyschoolfood.org for more tips and resources for parents and teachers and, and school administrators, as well as plantpurenation.com. Plantpurenation.com uh, has more uh, ideas, meal tips, and frozen meals, for instance, right there. And you can learn more about the plant-based movement from plantpurenation.com. Thanks for joining us.